All right, hello again, everyone. This is the algebra team. I am Mr. Leffelholtz at Cimarron Memorial High School. And today we are doing unit three, lesson three, constant rate. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is just a review. I'm gonna review lesson two a little bit. Lesson two kind of reviews lesson one as well, all right? So remember we did direct variation graphs, okay? And we would have a table and we would take that table, make points out of it. Now, what we have with this table is consistent pattern on the left and right side. Okay, the left side, I'm going up by 10 every time. The right side, I'm going up by 16 every time. And that gives me a straight line when I plot the points. Okay, so if I have a straight line and that line, if it would go through, if I go all the way through and connect the dots and keep going, if it goes through zero, zero, that means I have direct variation. Okay, now I could also have a table like this, again, consistent on both sides. Here I'm going up by fives and here I'm going up by nines. So I'm consistent in the X and Y column. But when I graph it, this graph, although it makes a straight line, does not go through zero, zero. So therefore, we do not have direct variation. Okay, all right. So what we're doing today, and let me get out of this and go straight to the paper. Okay, so today what we're doing is we're talking about, well, first of all, do you remember the formula for direct variation? Well, the formula is y equals k times x, okay? Which means if I can find k, if I know what k is, if I know what's in the x column, like if I know how many miles per hour I'm going, then I just multiply times that 1.6 that we found to get my kilometers per hour, which was my y value. Okay, so now if I have that formula, okay, K, the constant is Y over X. So if I have a table, I just take whatever's in the Y column, divide by whatever's in the X column. Of course, they have to be lined up straight across from each other, and that gives me my constant. Okay, now what we did, we've done so far speed or temperature. Now the temperature didn't line up. The temperature did not give us the same K value every time, so therefore not direct variation. Okay, all right. We can also use the constant rate is helpful for determining benchmarks or goals, okay? So we can use those things, and that's what we're going to do today. So today we're going to look at various examples of how this can be used in the real world, all right? So here we go today. Get my pen. And our objective today, I can calculate the constant rate of change in a linear relationship, okay? All right, so constant rate. The constant rate is, I'm just going to go down the sheet here with the notes instead of writing it all out and slowing you guys down, okay? The rate of change is the unit of output variable y per unit of the input variable x, which means the rate of change is just y over x, okay? The rate determines the input and output, which means since k equals y over x miles per hour, miles is the output y and the hours is the input x. Okay, so this would be rate, meaning if I'm going 60 miles per hour, okay, K then would be 60 because miles would be, if I take hours, which would be one hour, means I'm going 60 miles. Okay, so setting a goal and monitoring progress. So if I have Randy wants to run the half marathon, which is 13.1 miles in three hours or less, what pace does Randy need to run? How many miles per hour does Randy need to run to make 13.1 miles in three hours or less. Okay, so all we have to do here is, since miles is 13.1 and time is three hours, and the pace is in miles per hour, all we do is take the miles and divide by the hours. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is take the 13.1 divide by three. All right, so 13.1 divided by three is 4.37 miles per hour. Now notice, miles per hour, the per hour means that if I'm in a fraction, this means I have 4.37 miles per hour. You could also say it like that, okay? Or 4.37 miles per hour, okay? Those all mean pretty much the same thing, okay? You're going to see it this way most of the time, just MPH miles per hour, okay? All right, now at the 10-mile mark, he's already been running for two hours. Is he on pace, and how do you know? Well, I know because I'm going to do the same formula. So I'm going to take the 10 miles and I'm going to divide by how long he's been running, two hours. Okay, so first we need to figure out his pace, miles per hour. He's been running 10 miles in two hours. So 
he's running at five miles per hour. Now, hopefully we can see five miles per hour compared to 4.37 miles per hour. This one's quicker. So he's definitely on pace to finish on time, right? Since his speed is faster than the pace he needs to run, he is on pace and can beat the three-hour goal he set for himself. So if you think about it, right, he's run 10 miles in two hours. He's only got then 3.1 miles left in one hour. Okay, so and he's already so he's definitely he has less left than he would need than his 4.37 pace that he needs. So he should be ahead of pace. Okay, all right. Shania wants to save five hundred dollars for Christmas shopping. December is about twelve weeks away. How much money will she need to save per week? Okay, this is again per week means that number. The per week goes in the denominator. That means the twelve goes in the denominator. Okay, so that means we're taking 500 divided by 12 weeks, and we get 41.67. If you punch that into your calculator, you'll see that. Okay, so she needs to save $41.67 per week in order to hit exactly 500. Okay, and when we say 41.67, that really means $41.67, right? Okay, so at five weeks, she saved $200. Is she on pace? Well. If she saved $200 in five weeks, she takes the 200 divided by five, and that means she has $40 per week so far. Well, 40 is less than the 4167 she needs, so she is not on pace. Okay, now she's not far behind. 40 and $41.67 are pretty close. So if she basically throws just a couple extra dollars in there, then she's on pace. Okay, see how that works so far? So all you're doing is finding the numbers and comparing them and seeing if they're on pace. All right, example five. Hector likes to sleep and presses the snooze often. Each push is an extra nine minutes of sleep. How much more sleep will he get with two pushes or with five pushes? Okay, so this is the other way around. This is not per, okay? I'm getting nine minutes of sleep per push, okay? which means I'm setting it up just a little bit different this way. We are given the constant rate of nine minutes per push. The input variables are two and five, which means we are multiplying the nine times the two and the five. So the first one, we take nine, time, nine minutes per push times two pushes equals 18 minutes. And I'm gonna show you another way to do this, okay? I'm gonna take nine minutes, and when we say per push, that means per push, is the denominator, okay? And we're multiplying by two pushes, okay? Now, there's no denominator there, but really what I'm doing is putting it over one, right? A denominator of one doesn't change anything. Dividing by one doesn't change anything. So what I'm looking for is I have a push in the numerator and a push in the denominator, and those are gonna cancel each other out to leave me with minutes. So if you check your units, you can easily see that you've set up your multiplication correctly, okay? So my answer then is 18 minutes because now I have nine minutes times two. Dividing by one, again, doesn't change anything, okay? All right, second one, I would set it up the same way over here, except now I have five. So nine times five is 45 minutes, all right? Pretty quick and easy, right? All right, Joanna is preparing Thanksgiving dinner the average person will eat about two and a half servings of turkey. How many servings of turkey should she prepare for eight people or for 18 people? Okay, this is the same type of problem we have with number five. This one is the other way around. It tells me what my rate is. My rate is 2.5 servings of turkey. Okay, the average per person, because it says the average person. Okay, so how many servings? do I need for eight people for 18? So this time we're multiplying like we did in the previous problem. All right, which means two and a half servings, so 2.5 times eight, okay? 2.5 times eight, I punch in my calculator, I get 20, okay? And because here person is in my denominator because it's per person, and here people, person, same thing, in the numerator, those are gonna cancel each other out. So all I'm left with is servings, okay? And again, if I set it up like this, I have 2.5 servings numerator 
over person, because it's per person, times eight people. Okay, now I'm going to say persons, even though it's not quite correct, because then I can see person, person, right? And then again, I'm going to put that over one for my units. So I can see person cancels person as far as the fractions. Okay, so eight times 2.5 makes 20. Now I got the same idea here, but this time I have 18. So I have 2.5 times 18 people equals 45 servings. Okay, all right, next one. Pay attention to which unit is input and output for this next one. All right, Jackson wants to make a trip to Mexico and is bringing $500 with him. The conversion is 21 pesos per US dollar. How many pesos is that? All right, so now, since Y equals KX, okay, the number they're saying is 21 pesos per US dollar. So if I have US dollars, okay, so in order to make pesos, I have to multiply by 21. So it's US times 21 equals pesos. All right, so if I'm looking down here, 21 pesos per dollar. So 21 this is the same idea here, pesos per dollar. I'm just going to mark it like that, times $500. Okay, now, yes, normally we put the 500 there, but since I'm shorthanding, now my dollars are going to cancel. So I have 500 times 21 leaves me with pesos, which is 10,500 pesos. Okay, so make sure, right, if I'm saying 21 per US dollar, that means 21 pesos per US dollar it means I have to take the dollars and multiply by 21 to get pesos. Okay, so that's this conversion here or here, 21 pesos per US dollar, per means denominator. Okay, and that means I multiply by the 500. All right, so next one here. Abigail wants to buy an item online from a Japanese retailer. Okay, the conversion is 105 yen per US dollar. So again, per US dollar, like here, per US dollar. If the item is listed at 2,094.75 yen, how much is that in US dollar? Well, this looks almost identical to the previous prop, except we're in yen instead of pesos, and my number's bigger, okay? So I'm gonna set it up the exact same way as the previous one. Right here, we're gonna say Y equals 105 yen per US dollar. So that's my Y here. And then we multiply by how many yen we have, okay? All right, so if we have, whoops, I did that backwards, didn't I? Okay, all right, so yen per US dollar means 105 per US dollar. Now this time, I want, dollars. But dollars would be in my denominator, right? So I have to flip it around because here it would say, I would say 105 yen per dollar, right? So if I write it like that, I want yen, I want dollars on top. Okay, so all I'm going to do is flip this upside down, my conversion rate. So this is what we're doing here. Okay, all right. So if I have Okay, set this up different. Y equals KX. 2,094.75 yen equals 105 yen per US dollar. So this time my answer is, because my conversion is the 105 yen per US dollar. Okay, so that means if I want Y, okay, so I'm gonna set, pay attention here because I'm setting this up way different than the previous one because I'm looking for a different answer. Okay, all right, because I'm not looking for yen. I already have yen. Yen is my answer. Over here, pesos was my answer. So here, yen is my answer, which means I already have the 2094, okay? So what I have is 2094.75 yen equals, all right, the K is the multiplier. The K is the 105, so 105 yen per dollar, okay? And then I would multiply times X amount of dollars. 
Okay, so X is my variable, dollars, like so. Now, the dollars will cancel the dollars. That makes sense. Okay. And then I'm going to be left with yen on top over here, yen on top over there. That makes sense, right? So what's going to happen here is we have 2094.75 equals 105x yen. Okay. I'm just switching the X and the N, which means what do I have to do from previous things that we've already done? I have to divide. In order to solve for X, I have to divide by the 105, divide by the 105. Okay? And when I do that, that's going to get me 1995 as an answer. Okay? So I set it up differently because here, for between these two equations here, between the pesos and yen, right? Here they told us how many dollars. Here they told us how many yen instead. Okay? So I'm setting up my equation the same way. It's just my variables in a different spot. Okay? So here I'm taking, here I'm looking for the y. Here I'm looking for the x. But the x has other stuff on that side. It already has the 105 there. Okay? So that means I got to divide out the 105. And that's going to get me my $19.95 answer. Okay? All right. That's all we have for today. That is the end of Unit 3, Lesson 3. Next up will be the practice test and a test coming up. Okay? All right. Thank you again, and good luck. See you next time on the Algebra Team.